Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about function notation. Uh, this form, f of x equals 3x minus 2, that's function notation, where x is the input value and f of x is the output value. So if we wanted to evaluate this function at x equal 2, if you see this notation, f with the 2 in the parentheses, that tells you that's what we're doing. We're actually evaluating this function when x is 2. So the result would be the input is 2 and the output would be 3 times 2 minus 2, which is 4. So here's a couple of examples here. This function, you know, generally to evaluate a function, you have to have a function defined first. So here's, here's a set of rules defined by the function f of x. It says 3 times x plus the absolute value of x. Now if I want to evaluate that function at negative 2, then I'm going to get f evaluated at negative 2, and that would mean I do 3 times negative 2 plus the absolute value of negative 2, and that gives me negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4. Here's another one. Uh, I've got the function defined to be x cubed minus x plus 3. So to evaluate that at negative 3, and I'm just picking these numbers randomly, by the way, just so you know they're not coming from any particular place. So f of negative 3 would be negative 3 cubed minus negative 3 plus 3. And when I calculated that, I got negative 21. Here's a rational function. Now notice I used s and t instead of the standard f and x. So here's 3t over t minus 5. Well, I want to evaluate that at 3. So let's see what s of 3 is. S of 3 would be 3 times 3 over 3 minus 5, which is 9 over negative 2. And notice I just put the minus out front, so that's minus five, 9 halves. And now over here, when I evaluate the same function at 5, that's supposed to say a 5 there, not a 3. So when I evaluate the function at 5, I get 3 times 5 over 5 minus 5, which gives me 15 over 0. Well, that's undefined, and you'll remember from when we talked about domain, you can see that if, if t is 5, um, you're going to have 0 in the denominator there. Okay, now, if I give you a function like this, if I define a function, I could ask you to evaluate the function at an expression instead of number. Here I'm asking you to evaluate this function at 2a minus 1 instead of a number. Well, you do the same thing, but generally you can uh, simplify the expression. So f evaluated at 2a minus 1. Everywhere there's an x, I have to replace x with 2a minus 1. So here I have x squared, so I replace x with 2a minus 1 and get 2a minus 1 squared. And then I have minus 4x, so replace x with 2a minus 1, and I get minus 4 times 2a minus 1. And then don't forget to bring down the 2. Okay, now I need to simplify this. Now you might need to review how to square binomials, but when you square this, you're going to get 4a squared minus 4a plus 1. And then here I'm going to distribute the minus 4, so minus 4 times 2a is minus 8a, and minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4, and then bring down the 2. Now, if I collect like terms, I'll get 4a squared by itself, and here I have minus 4a, minus 8a, so that's going to give me minus 12a, and then I have 1 plus 4 plus 2, which is 7. So my final answer would be 4a squared minus 12a plus 7, and that's how you evaluate a function at an expression. Now, derivatives actually come from difference quotients. So when we get into derivatives later in this course, they're actually going to come from difference quotients. So let's talk about how do we get a difference quotient. Now in this example, I'm using h. Um, you might also see in most Calc, Calc 1 courses, um, they'll use delta x. But generally, with a business calculus course, I'll use h instead of delta x. It's a little bit less bulky than delta x. But basically, all, these, all this means is change in x. So, so whether you use delta x or h, the h just represents the change in the x value. So 
we have f evaluated at x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that is the difference quotient. Now why is it called that? Well, the top is a difference and the entire uh, expression is a quotient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate this using three steps. And that's all we need is three steps. So to evaluate a difference quotient, you have to be given a function to start with. So I'm going to give you this function, f of x equals 3x minus 5. So now that we have the function, now we can go through the steps of creating this. So I'm going to do it in three steps. The first step, I'm going to get figure out what this is, and I'm going to simplify it as much as I can. So let's figure out what do we get if we take that function that we're given and evaluate it at x plus h. Well, let's see. The function is 3x minus 5. So I just replace x with x plus h. So instead of 3x, I have 3 times the quantity x plus h minus 5. Now I can simplify that. If I distribute the 3, I get 3x plus 3h. So my first step is done. I've got 3x plus 3h minus 5. Now, the next step is to calculate the difference. So I'm going to calculate the difference between f of x plus h and f of x. Now you want to be careful because when you're going to subtract this, it, it's got to be distributed through the terms if there's more than one term. So let's see. Okay, this right here is what I got in step one, right? That's f of x plus h. Notice the minus, okay? And then I'm going to subtract what? f of x, just the function. So just subtract the function. So let's go ahead and distribute the minus through these two terms. And so we'll just bring these first three terms over, 3x plus 3h minus 5. Distribute the minus, and I get minus 3x plus 5. And now here's what's going to happen. Just about on most of these difference quotients, something's going to cancel. So notice here, 3x minus 3x is 0, so they cancel. And then minus 5 plus 5 is 0, so they cancel. So all we're left with is 3h. So 3h is the result of the difference. So now in the last step, I'm going to calculate the quotient. Remember, in step 2, I calculated the numerator, right? And I got 3h, right? There it is. So all I have to do is divide that by h. Well, 3h over h... Uh, the h's cancel, right? h over h is 1, and I just get 3. Now, one thing to remember, um, h over h only cancels if it's not 0. If you had 0 over 0, that wouldn't equal 1. So I kind of have to make a little statement here to remind us that h cannot equal 0. But if h is any other number, then yeah, it's going to cancel. h over h is going to be 1. Okay, so that's how we calculate the difference quotient for uh, that first one. Now, the functions can get a little more complicated, and we'll see when we get into the derivatives, we'll actually do some, some a couple of strange examples, but this is just a basic quadratic function. Um, I'm going to do it the same way. Step one, I'm going to evaluate this function at x plus h. So let's look at the function. The function says x squared minus 2x. Well, instead of x squared, I've got to square the entire x plus h. And instead of minus 2x, I've got to say minus 2 times the entire x plus h. Now, again, review how to square binomials if you need to. But you just if you square the quantity x plus h, you're going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Uh, you could always do it a long way. Just say x plus h times x plus h on scratch paper. And now if you distribute the minus 2, you're going to get minus 2x minus 2h. All right, so all of this is what I got in my first step. So now I need to calculate the difference. So I have to figure out, take f of x plus h minus f of x. Well, remember, this part right here is f of x plus h from step 1. So there's f of x plus h. And then minus the function x squared minus 2x. Now let me go ahead and distribute that minus for you because I didn't show you that step, but that's minus, if you distribute the minus, that's going to be minus x squared plus 2x. Okay? 
So since I did that, let's get rid of this. Okay, so now look at what we've got. You've got an x squared here, and if you subtract this x squared, they cancel, right? And then you've got 2x here, and you've got a minus 2x here, so they're going to cancel. So you're only going to get three terms. You're going to get the 2xh, you're going to get the h squared, and you're going to get the minus 2h. Those are the three terms you're left with. So I'm going to bring those three terms down, and I'm going to do those in the quotient portion. So there's those three terms. And then the quotient, we divide by h. Now I can just divide h into each one of these. Or you could factor the h out and cancel it that way. But either way is fine. So if I divide 2xh by h, the h is canceled, and I get 2x. If I divide h squared by h, one of the h's cancel, and I just get h. And then if I divide minus 2h by h, the h is canceled, and I get minus 2. And again, the h's only cancel if they don't equal 0. Okay? So that's how you calculate a difference quotient. Okay, I just want to talk briefly about increasing and decreasing. If you look at a graph, like if you look at this graph here, absolute value of x minus 2, you can graph it on a graphing utility if you want to. This makes a V here. And the apex here is at the point x equal 2. So basically, if you look at the left side of this graph, it's decreasing. So the function, we'd say the function is decreasing as x goes from negative infinity to 2. But the right side of the graph, the function is increasing. So we would say the function is increasing over the interval from 2 to infinity. Now, this next graph, x cubed plus 2, I drew kind of a rough picture of it here. But if you look at this graph, as you move left to right, this graph is always increasing. So we would say this graph is increasing over its entire domain, which is actually minus infinity to infinity. Okay? Now I want to just talk briefly about an even function and an odd function. An even function, uh, a function is even if you replace x with negative x and you get f of x. A function is odd if you replace x with negative x and you get minus f of x. Okay, let's do b first. This function, if you replace x with negative x, you get negative x to the fourth minus 5 times negative x squared plus 3. Well, negative x to the fourth is x to the fourth. Uh, minus x squared is just x squared, so you get minus 5x squared and then plus 3. Well, this is the same function as we started with. So by replacing x with negative x there, it didn't change it. So we got the same thing. We got what we started with. So this function is an even function. Now, if you look at this, this next function, x cubed minus the cube root of x, if you replace x with negative x here, you get minus x cubed minus the cube root of negative x. Well, when you cube negative x, you just get negative x cubed. And when you take the cube root of negative x, it's the same as the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of x. Well, the minus the cube root minus negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, so minus negative 1 is plus 1, so you end up getting minus x cubed plus the cube root of x. Well, if you compare this with the original function, you'll see they're opposites of one another. So basically here, when we evaluated f at negative x, we actually got minus f of x. And so therefore, this function is an odd function. So this function is an odd function, and this function is an even function. Now, what you're going to find out if you graph these, is you'll find out that odd functions have symmetry with respect to the origin, and even functions have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So this is the graph of the odd function, and notice that this piece of the graph, if you go across the origin, is symmetric to this piece, and this piece up here is symmetric to this piece, down here. So that's origin symmetry. And this function is the second one, the one that was even function. And notice this graph on this side is a mirror image of the graph on the other side of the y-axis. Therefore, we have y-axis symmetry. So all even functions have symmetry about the y-axis, and all odd functions have symmetry about the origin. And sometimes that comes in handy when you're trying to graph. Now, a function can be neither, like this function is neither even nor odd. So, you know, it just has no symmetry. These are some graphs that I had on here from a previous lecture. I think this is a duplicate, so you can just skip over this if you want to.